Hi everyone and welcome to Rum Runner Dance. I'm Dan Genovese. Today we're making a modern tiki drink, Lost Lake. Oh, blow the man down, goodies, blow the man down. Today's recipe we're making is Lost Lake. Lost Lake, as a cocktail, is the signature drink of Lost Lake, the tiki bar, um, or exotic cocktail bar, whichever one you really want to call it. It's here in Chicago, Illinois. I had the great pleasure of recently going to it with my wife, and I actually put up a review of their bar on my Instagram page. Uh, you know, link below. Check that out if you want to take a look at all the different drinks that we had and what I thought about them. The first drink that we had at the bar, which was their signature drink, Lost Lake. This was made by Paul McGee as a signature cocktail for this restaurant. It's a cool little place here in the Logan Square neighborhood of Chicago. Pretty con pretty inconspicuous, you know, you would just be walking down the street, you wouldn't expect to see a tiki bar where, you, where it is. Um, and But when you walk in, you might actually see a couple of famous people, celebrities, but also it's really cool. My wife and I sat at, right in the corner at the bar because I wanted to talk to the bartenders about the drinks. And uh, we were right next to this really cool fish tank. And still don't know, but I think they have a fugu there. Um, I'll put a picture of a fugu right here. It's a type of fish, puffer fish. And normally it's used in sushi, but it's really dangerous to eat because it can kill you and all this other stuff. So, but it's a cool looking fish. And I just saw it in the tank and I was fascinated with it all night. And the more I drank, the more fascinated I became with this. So why don't we get into this drink today? And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the drink um, as we go through it. So I'm using a drink mixer here today. Um, based upon the original recipe and what most tiki bars do, drink mixer is the way to go. As I watch them make the drink, they use the drink mixer. Um, but if you don't have a drink mixer, you could just use the shaker. All right, so jigger. We're gonna start out with some juices here. We got lime juice. We need three quarters of an ounce. Fresh squeeze. Don't use that stuff out of the little lime shaped fruit thing in the store. That's not good. Next, sweetener. This is passion fruit syrup. If you don't wanna make passion fruit syrup, that's all right. You can go click the link below to my Amazon store. Got some nice commercial ones available. We're gonna need three quarters of an ounce. Next, fresh pineapple juice. So this is my fresh pineapple juice from two pineapples. I know it doesn't look as much as it normally is. I did a little bit of a different process now and I'm trying this out and I like the flavor a little bit more. Pineapple, when you juice it, tends to have a lot of residual pulp and fiber that comes out in the juice. It's like inevitable. Um, but there's a way to get rid of that using a lot of different filters. So I'm trying that out for the first time. I'm not gonna admit, uh, I am gonna admit, I'm not gonna lie, but I will admit, <laughs> got tongue tied there for a second, that pineapple juice to go through and to strain all that stuff out is a pain in the butt, all right? so. If you don't want to do that, just buy unsweetened pineapple juice from the store, or better yet, get it from your local grocery store and have them juice it for you. They probably do it as long as they sell fresh squeezed juice and uh, saves you the trouble and a lot of cleanup. We're only gonna need a half an ounce of this guy though. Half an ounce and a couple extra drops. All right, now we're gonna get into some of the spirits here and this is where I love what Paul McGee does with this drink because it kind of takes it a little bit of a twist from the normal template of a tiki drink. So the first thing we're going to add in here is Luxardo's maraschino cherry liqueur. So you want a maraschino cherry liqueur. You do not have to use Luxardo's, although I recommend it. Um, but you don't want to use a cherry liqueur. Don't confuse it with a regular cherry liqueur like cherry herring. That's not the same thing. That tastes like cherry juice. That's sweet. This is, tastes like, well, it's actually a unique flavor all unto itself. It's actually really made from cherry pits. 
um, and fermented. It's really tasty and it's really good. You only want a little bit here because a little goes a long way with this stuff, quarter ounce. Love it. Next thing we're gonna get here is Campari. All right, the Italian bitter liqueur. Um, dyed red, um, you can get the one that's uh, not dyed if you want to. Um, there's a couple different makers of it out there. Uh, I like the original Campari. This stuff is really good. And we're gonna do a quarter ounce of this. But I will say this, my wife, who doesn't like Campari at all, Right? It's a little bit kind of t reminiscent of grapefruit in that kind of bitterness, like just drinking straight grapefruit juice. She, she doesn't like it. So like in a jungle bird, it's like too much for her. But in this drink, she actually still liked the drink. So it kind of tells you a little bit that the bitterness is in here, but it's not so bitter that it, it like puts you off like maybe a Negroni might be too strong or maybe somebody doesn't really like a jungle bird because it's kind of too bitter. Now, next what we need is our rum, of course. Two ounces of rum. The original drink that Paul McGee put together called for two ounces of aged Jamaican rum, but he wasn't very specific on which kind. I tried a couple different ones and I landed on a split of two rums that I liked the best. And I wish I paid closer attention as they were making the drink because I didn't see which, two, which one or two or more they pulled off the shelves to make the drink. So the first one I'm gonna start out with is a funky aged, lightly aged Jamaican rum, Smith & Cross. Stuff is delicious. This is navy strength, so it's a little bit higher on the proof, but I really like it for the funky flavors that it brings. It brings that very hogo type notes that you would get from, uh, from a good Jamaican rum. We're gonna need one ounce of this guy. Next, I like to stick, stay with Jamaican. Again, both are Jamaican, but this time we're gonna go with a more mellowed type of Jamaican rum. Not so much on the funk side, but it's got good rum flavor to it. And what I mean by a rum flavor is like the notes of rum, kind of like the vanilla -y type notes, the oak notes, not so much the hogo type things that you get from a normal Jamaican, but kind of a smooth, easy sipping kind of rum. And that's where I like the Appleton Estate signature here. It is also a lightly aged rum, but it has a totally different flavor profile than like the Smith & Cross. This I always tell everyone is people who are new to rum and very much new to Jamaican rum. Try Appleton Estate signature. It's the most approachable Jamaican rum for your first time around. We're gonna need an ounce of this guy as well. Right. Here we go. That takes care of our ingredients. Next, 12 ounces of crushed ice. You can use pebble too if you don't have crushed. Okay. Now we're going to blend this for about four seconds. All right. Now, Let's go ahead and start constructing this drink. I'm gonna wipe the hands off, gonna wipe the board down here real quick. Okay, now, let's go ahead and first thing is we're gonna grab a Woodrow coaster. I like my rustic guy here. You can pick those up, link below. Now, this guy, unfortunately, you can't get in the link below, but I will tell you where you can get this. This is one of my favorite pie eye tiki mugs. I love pie eye tikis. Um, they're a great, husband and wife team of ceramicists from central florida absolutely amazing mugs um not only do they take so much care in craftsmanship of the outside of the mugs and the coloring of the mugs and the shading of them but even the inside of these has the coolest combination of glazes on the inside it's they're just awesome uh, so what i'm going to be using this guy here today i'm going to take this whole drink here and we're going to go ahead and dump him right on it now he comes up to about there. So I'm gonna fill the rest up with crushed ice. Um, if you don't have a tiki mug or you don't wanna use a tiki mug, that's okay. Actually at Lost Lake, they don't serve this in a tiki mug. Um, they serve this inside of like a tall Collins glass or a zombie glass, whichever one that you happen to have. Um, 
You can put it in that too. Just gonna fill this up with some crushed ice. Perfect. All right. Next, we're gonna wanna garnish this guy up, of course. So we're gonna start out with a little bit of a stack of our dehydrated fruit. So I have a, this is a pineapple, dehydrated pineapple wheel from Cocktail Garnish Company. Now you notice that it is dehydrated, but it's still a little pliable. And I like that because you can take it inside of a cocktail glass, any glass that you have, and you can kind of bend them around just like that. Love doing it. Next, we're gonna do after we got that pineapple down in here, we're gonna take ourselves a lime wedge. We're gonna take it and we're gonna tuck him down into here. Now, the lime wedge guy is like, he's in there, right? And you see him, but he creates a little pocket between him and the back. And that's where we're gonna put these in there. A little bit of mint bundle, mun bundle of magical mint. It's regular mint, but you know, let's call it magical. So out of the top there, we're gonna have a little bit of mint coming out, right? And you have this, you see this little bit of the pineapple in there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab ourselves our Surfside Sip Straw. And I'm gonna grab, ooh, which one do I want today? How about, yeah, how about this guy? We haven't used this in like forever. This one's really great. So this guy's a little bit taller. So you can see I have some taller ones here. This is a cool bamboo thing. And this has a little salamander dude on it. Um, Andrew does this kind of thing on all the tiki mugs, uh, tiki mugs, ooh, tiki straws that he makes. Um, if you don't see the option um, when you click on the, the store, just send him a message, it's real easy, and you can tell him what you want and he'll make sure that he gets back to you and hooks you up so that you can get what it is that you want from the store. This is a bamboo straw with a little salamander dude on it. Just gonna go and tuck him right down into there, just like that. Okay, perfect, and there we go. Here you have it, everybody. That's a Paul McGee original, Lost Lake. Let's give this guy a taste. Yeah, this is, oh man, it's good. All right, it's 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 really good drink. It's not overly sweet, okay? It's not this bitter nastiness that you, you're thinking because there's Campari in it, so don't think that. It's a delicate play on a tiki drink, more delicate than what you would think it would be. So you, you're getting the citrus note in here, the passion fruit, the pineapple, and the lime, provide sweetness, brightness, and the tropical flavor that you kind of expect from most tiki drinks. Now the twist on this is really this beautiful Luxardo Maraschino Cherry Liqueur in the Campari. The Campari acts as a clear bitter flavor inside of the drink and it brings that bitter component which combats the sweetness and plays on, not, not harms or it kind of has like that alternate flip side of the coin kind of flavor to the tropical fruit note but it plays into it real nice with that bitterness so that it's a delicious counterpart pineapple juice and campari work really well together if you haven't ever had a jungle bird before try it they work real nice the other thing that we have here is this maraschino cherry liqueur not something you see in tiki often it's in a lot of innovative classic type cocktails and some of the ones that were part of the cocktail revolution, but not necessarily something that you see in the tiki menu. But this plays so nice in here. It adds that subtle distinctive maraschino flavor into the cocktail. Even though we have funky rum, you know, a nice solid rum, some really bitter flavor, not real bitter, but a bitter kind of aperitif type flavor here. I think it's an aperitif. Might be a digestive. I'll correct myself here below. I don't remember what this actually is at the moment. Um, flavor. And then you would think it kind of get lost. Like just a quarter ounce would get lost in this. But remember, this is this is a pungent flavor. Not, not overbearing, but it's a distinctive flavor that comes through in a drink. 
So adding a quarter ounce to it in here still comes through. It doesn't overpower, it's not too much, but you could still taste it. But the real thing here, these rums, I love the play on the little bit of hogo that you get here that's coming through from that Smith and Cross and that funky kind of banana kind of flavor that's coming in. And then that nice rounding out of that rum flavor, the full round out there with the Appleton signature, I think is a beautiful combination for this drink. I still don't think they're the two rums that they use at Lost Lake, so the next time I head there, I'm gonna make sure that I find out which two they use, or one, or more. I'll let you know. But uh, there you have it, everyone. A great modern tiki drink, Lost Lake. Thank you so much for tuning in today for our episode on Lost Lake. Um, I hope you learned a little bit more here about rum and about tiki and how tiki doesn't always just rely on juices, sweeteners, and rum in order to come up with its flavors. Um, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button right here and make sure that you get notified every single time that a new video comes out. Also, while you're at it, why don't you check out these other videos that we have down here. We have a lot of cool ones on tiki, original cocktails by me, and even some really good classics. And until next time, everybody, Coley Maluna.